That's right, you hear me say beers review yet again, so you know it must be side-by-side -side review time, and it's Sunday morning. Why am I saying it's Sunday morning? Not because, well, it is Sunday morning, it's time for me to, like, drink beer and shit to waste away my bad memories, but that's a personal problem and issue. No, it's Sunday morning because we have a beer from Weyerbacher Brewing Company out of Easton, PA, US of A. Yay, yay. And we have what from them? Their 2015 and 2016 vintage of Sunday morning stout. This beer is an imperial stout. It's a spring slash kind of end of winter serving. It clocks in at 11.3% ABV and between 50 and 90 IBUs. This beer has had fresh coffee from Fieldstone Coffee, which is a local coffee roaster in Easton, PA area, I think, anyway, added to the beer. Also, it has had been barrel aged. It's also known as SMS or the barrel aged version of Tiny. That's right, their Imperial Stout. And this beer kind of began this like way back in 2013. Now, last year, when I had this 2015 vintage, I really freaking dug it. And I gave it a high A. And I said in that video, G, I want to review this beer again and see how awesome it is and how it has aged over time. Now, coffee beers or coffee adjunct beers don't always age awesome. So I'm hoping for the best in the 2015 vintage. So what we're going to do first, we're going to crack the top, I think, first on the 2016 That'll give us like the fresh perspective, and then we'll go into, excuse me, the cellar vintage over here, the 2015, to see how it has developed with a year on it. So, time to pop the top on this bad boy, get in the glass, and tell you what's up with 2016. I can't wait. I've earned this beer big time this weekend. Boom. Big crack on off the top. Super huge can of smoke, and there's bourbon and coffee blasting off the top of this beer. Obsessively collectible Weyerbacher Crown. Let's get it into the snifta. Hell yes, man, still can of smoke coming out. Ooh, nice. Look at that freaking motor oil and that dark chocolatey head on that beer. Yum. Dude, that, mm, this is like getting my malt maniac side rolling already just looking at this bad boy. Let's see what's up with the appearance. Hmm. Gee, is it black as night, black as pitch, black as Paul in at PA Brew News' soul? Maybe? Maybe, Paul? Yes? Anyways, there is no light penetrating this beer whatsoever. We got a solid one finger head of super tightly packed dark cocoa colored bubbles when I swirl it. Oh, damn, we're getting tons of al alcohol lakes and glass lacing already. Man, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking beer in the glass. Check that out, guys. Now that is a freaking Imperial Stout. And ah, now, without further ado, it's time to see what's up with the aroma. Because we already told you what it looked like and stuff, so that's what we do. We smell it now. And, oh, I'm <laughs> digressing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, diving in. Wow. Big bourbon coffee up in your grill. Mm, chocolate, toffee, caramel, milk chocolate, cocoa. A little bit of fudginess. Mm, sweet bourbon, vanilla, barrel char. And then as you swirl it, the dark roasted coffee is coming up even more as the head recedes. Mm, now it's a freaking coffee bomb and like earthy hop bomb. With those bourbon notes mixed in the background, I'm remembering this beer now. Sh shit, I'm diving in, guys. This smells really tasty. Mm, wait. Bit of tobacco in the background there, too. Yum. Diving in, guys. Cheers. Happy Sunday morning. Yeah. Mmm. Damn, that's good. Look at that glass lacing on that. Mmm. Wow. Right up front, you get hit with coffee, barrel char, bourbon after that. A lot of good vanilla in there. Earthy hop in there also. In the aroma, there was no alcohol except for like that of bourbon spirits. The alcohol is super, super well hidden in this beer. Wow. Mm, the mouthfeel is nice, full, and creamy. Thick mouthfeel. Mm. Coating. And that coffee is in a really great balance with the malts in the background and the barrel. Mm. I could down this whole freaking glass from top to bottom without an issue. Mm. Super smooth, super tasty, very well balanced. Um, there's tons, more earthy hop in this than I remember. Maybe I'm more sensitive now because I've, I've recognized more because I've, I've brewed with like Fuggle and Willamette and those sort of hops and, and East Kent Goldings, that kind of thing. 
and but man, lots of fudge, dark chocolate at the same time, coffee, caramel, toffee, and bourbon in there. The bourbon's actually a little more understated than I may like, but I'm a bourbon person. Mm. Super tasty. Yum. So, I'm going to kick back, sip on this one a little bit. Then I'm going to come back with the 2015, and we'll do the judgment and the verdict between these after I maybe kick back and drink a little bit of that one, too. But I got plenty of happy juice here in front of me to drink, and I will be back to see you in a flash. Mm -hmm. Okay, gang, I'm back. I've been drinking on this beer for probably about, oh, I think... 15, 20 minutes, somewhere around there, and it's just really super pleasurable. The only off thing I can possibly pull out of this is that it's got a really, really slight, like, metallic note in the aroma. That's it. It's not present in the taste at all, but a really slight metallic note. I'm not sure what that is. Let me say, it's kind of gone away now. It was like when I was poured more out of the bottle and it kind of like the head, you know, um, rose and receded, and that came up, but it's kind of gone away. But really tasty beer. I've just defiled my palate again. Who cares? That's how we roll. So now, without further ado, lovingly cellared in my cellar for a whole year, the 2015 vintage. Let's pop the top on this, get in the sniff off, and tell you what's up with its appearance, aroma, you know, all that shit. Boom. Gigantic hiss off the top. Tons of cat of smoke rolling off the top of this one. Obsessively collectible Weyerbacher crown, of course. And let's get it in our identical sniff off. I had to, as you can see, put my my bottle dating on the front of these because the bottles are exactly the same as one another. The only thing that's different in them is the date that's ink jetted on the top of them. So, it is identical to the last one. It is black, black as night, black as pitch. Mm, ain't no light passing through this one. The head's actually a little tighter packed on this one, less soap sudsy, and it's a little lighter in color. It's more khaki than, than mocha. Maybe they used a little more coffee this time. But, solid, just like the other one, instant glass lacing, tons of alcohol legs on the inside of that, but look at that, guys. A little bit less head on this beer, but it has had a whole year in the bottle. So, let's see how the aromas change, because this is a coffee beer, so that is a possibility that the aromas change as the coffee flavor and aromas could recede. Diving in. Mm, dark fruits greet you up at the top. After that... Bourbon is more forward than in the fresh version. Chocolate, toffee, lighter, less aggressive coffee, even as the head recedes and I swirl it. More barrel char, more bourbon forward, more st stereotypic imperial stout aromas forward. That coffee has receded back. The earthy hop is gone. But there's tons of vanilla, tons of bourbon, tons of toffee, dark fruits, Mm, chocolate, more tobacco aroma than in this kind of like um, vanilla t pipe tobacco, quarter, unburning, not burning vanilla t pipe tobacco. Mm, but the bourbon note is really way more forward in this version. So, time to dive in. This smells fucking awesome too. Cheers! Mmm. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. Man. Way, way more bourbon flavor in this. The mouthfeel is a tad, and only the slightest tad, thinner than this. Not, It's not a thin beer by any stretch of imagination. If you can see that, let me see. If you can see it on camera, it utterly coats the inside of the glass here. But, man, way more bourbon and vanilla forward. The coffee has receded. It's really a background player in this version of it. But this is like an awesome bourbon barrel aged stout now with nice raisins, like like bourbon-soaked raisin flavors in the background, mild cherry notes, tons of those tobacco notes, and barrel tannic, like sort of wood and barrel char notes. Mmm, I gotta have some more of this one. Damn. Mmm. Super smooth. Totally, totally hidden alcohol. The warming that was in the chest on this one is totally hidden in this. This is a scarily drinkable, dangerously drinkable 11.3% brew here. This one tells you a little more. I'm 11.3%. Watch out. I'm going to kick your ass. This one is a freaking stealth bomber after a year. It reminds me a lot of Bourbon County brand stout with a little bit less viscosity and aggressiveness. 
man, just so, so easy to drink. Per really, for a lot of people, this would be perfect mouthfeel. I find as I've drank these barrel-aged stouts over time, my tolerance and expectation of really big, quite viscous mouthfeel is co sort of like different than the norm of people out there that are talking about beers like this. But man, super, super tasty beer. Wow. This is so so much more bourbon forward than this one, but the aftertaste definitely has a pronounced coffee note and a pronounced dark, like high cacao, like 60% cacao level chocolate on the back end of the palate. Mmm. Yum. So, let's give a grade on this. You can see I'm kind of fucking geeking out on these beers. So, 2016 and 2015. Basically, Rape Beer and Beer Advocate are given these, Rape Beer's given this a 97, A, Virgin on A+. Beer Advocate gives, gives it a 96, high A, excuse me, Virgin on A+. And Untapped, if memory serves, gives this like 4.202 stars or something like that. So, real high A level for them as well. So, what do I grade this? So, fresh. I'm going to go with the 96, like I gave this fresh last year. It's super drinkable, super tasty, great coffee flavor in it. The only detractor was that slight metallic note in the aroma, but really, as this beer is opened up all the way, that goes away totally. Really great, easy, easy to drink beer, and it's up in your grill with those sort of um, those coffee flavors and tastes. And if you're into that more maybe than bourbon, this, you know, fresh is how you want to drink this beer. Now... 2015, which from memory, this was really coffee forward just like this one. As this has aged out and the coffee flavors have died down and taken a back note, the bourbon has really stepped forward. And as I'm talking to you here from drinking this beer, I taste like barrel char notes like on my palate. And that's probably a combined effect of the dark roast coffee or whatever it is they use in this dying down and leaving its like sort of char notes in the background and the barrel effect. And if you're a bourbon lover, this is your beer. It's very bourbon forward in flavor. I think I was drinking a snifter of bourbon last night. So the flavors of bourbon are very fresh in my memory. Not that I don't drink bourbon often. <laughs> yeah, it goes hand in hand, beer and bourbon. Come on, guys. Anyways, but damn... Totally freaking tasty. I'm elevating this up to, man, the coffee flavors have receded. But you know what? I really like the taste of beer. I'm giving it an A plus, 98. The, these flavors rock. I really, really dig the taste of this beer. Yeah, the coffee's died down, but I knew that was going to happen. And this is cellar great. The, the body hasn't dropped off. There's no off flavors. And it's so dangerously drinkable, guys. If you or into drinking bigger beers, you will not sense alcohol in this beer. So, I'm waffling on. High A, A plus, damn, Weyerbacher plus. This beer's a fucking value, dude. It was $11.99 for a fucking four-pack. Really? 12 bucks? Come on. That's that's awesome. Goose Island, you're getting one bottle. Un bottle. Dizzy Seis on sauce, 16 ounces for what? 10, 11 bucks? I got a four-pack for that. That is value. Thank you, Weyerbacher. So, have you had this beer, either vintage or fresh? Let me know what you know, because I like the quid pro quo and the back and forth, because that makes me more beer geekier and more smarter and stuff. And that is awesome. What is also awesome is when you think locally, drink locally, and support the craft beer movement, because we have more beers like Sunday Morning Stout, which I think, in my opinion, just so you know, this is better than KBS. It just is. Drop the mic. Let it go. KBS is all right. I had it with Johnny the Stunt Drinker this year, right on tap, down in Virginia, in Leesburg. And we were up there uh, getting together for that day, and it this is better than KBS. It's got better mouthfeel, bigger, fuller flavor, and definitely more defined bourbon flavor for around the same ABV level. Boom. I said it. It's done. Sorry, KBS fans. This is better. Anywho. <laughs> I was digressing again. You know how it goes. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, oh, what also makes me happy, along with copious amounts, probably just these two bottles of Weyerbacher Sunday Morning Stout, are when you rate, comment, subscribe, and smash that like button. Because that uh, is how we do it around here. So, to the next DJ's BrewTube, thanks a million to each and every one of you for watching. A big bunch of love for me. And, oh, what are you waiting for? That's right. Oh, it's coming for you now. A big PK!